we have looked to our nearest neighbour for all sorts of things. We copied them, we opened up our matches and so on to full crowds, largely unmasked. But there are things we can learn from their science. There are huge, a huge study this week, Pat. I mean, I was astounded by how robust scientifically this was. It's probably the biggest study ever of an infectious disease. Can you believe it? 1.8 million people have been followed uh, during this upsurge of cases and so on. You know, And they began to follow them in May. And then, of course, July 19th, the UK fully opened and the big question was what would happen next. Yeah. Exponential growth begins immediately. Fact, case numbers begin to go through the roof is the first thing. The, the biggest thing they found was it's mainly young people are spreading the virus. So 50% of all infections are coming from 5 to 24 year olds and that, that was kind of hypothesised because obviously they're mixing and mingling yeah. more but that's an important number. Half but of this all business of uh, young school going primary kids don't spread the infection. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry, not true. This data tells you that's absolutely not true. So that's one important thing they found. The second one was definitely vaccine stop transmission and that's been disputed as you know Pat and discussed forever in the last few weeks anyway and if you're vaccinated you're less infectious overall is yeah. the first thing. And we keep getting these people saying oh you're just the same if you're vaccinated or unvaccinated you can give it to somebody else well at, at, at peak load if you have a breakthrough infection the vaccine is going to be working a way to get rid of it. So yeah. uh, for how long might you be infectious? Well, again, this study took samples off these 1.8 yeah. million people some from their noses, measured the virus in them. And if you're vaccinated, you can get infected in your nose because the immune system is in your lungs mainly. Uh, you're uh, Probably two days you're infectious two days. for. For unvaccinated people, it's seven days, right? So immediately you can see now if you're vaccinated, you're spreading it less over the course of a week. You know, cause so that is the science. End of. The, end there of is story. no yeah, quarrel and, about this. And, and it's so robust. As I say, when you have 1.8 million people you're following it's really crystal clear the other very interesting fact was if you're in a household with people uh, and someone is, a, is is positive and you're vaccinated you have a 1 in 25 chance of getting infected which is not insubstantial but it does mean vaccinated people will pick it up but again if you're unvaccinated you have a, three, a 4 in 25 chance you have a threefold increased risk of infection if you're not vaccinated than if you are so again if you translate that into a population decrease of the virus overall you see so these are very important okay. hard, hard numbers that come from the hard state. numbers now we're rolling out boosters here we've already uh, rolled them out for the elderly and those who are immunocompromised in nursing homes and we're doing it for healthcare workers and uh, for, as and from this week the over 70s um, third uh, shots they work? They do. Now, this is a similarly huge study from Israel. This is 1.15 million people. So a huge number were followed after the booster shot, the third shot, and they followed them very closely. They followed them for 13 days. They look at their risk of infection again, risk of hospitalisation and so on. And again, huge protection following the third shot. Uh, 93% protection against severe disease, uh, 92% against uh, hospitalisation in that booster population. The unboosted ones, who they had as a, a kind of a control group, they had a higher risk of hospitalisation. And that's the evidence for waning, if you like. So what's happening is the booster is restoring protection back to what it was, if you like, in this group. And what was really nice was they measured the immune system in all these people. It was so strong, Pat, after the third shot, you can predict maybe two, three years, as we've been saying. I just hypothesised yeah. before, by the way. In other words, that third shot could give you two to three years protection. So again, it justifies the booster yeah. hugely. Now, you course. told us last week uh, that J&J &J has now effectively in America become a two-dose uh, regime. Um, and the argument might be if you had J&J &J, that you should get Pfizer uh, yep. as a, your second uh, shot. The people with AstraZeneca, particularly, uh, you know, healthcare workers, those who uh, have some underlying condition uh, and they had to wait 12 weeks before yep. they got the second shot, but it wanes quicker than Pfizer. So they should be high on the list. They should be high on the list. Yeah. Now, mind you, they're not that different in terms of waning. It, early on, the initial data said AstraZeneca is waning slightly more quickly, but the kind of Pfizer's catching up with the waning, really, if yeah. you look at it. Slight difference between them. But there's no doubt if you give Pfizer after AstraZeneca, you get a better response than a second shot of AstraZeneca or a third shot of AstraZeneca. So now they give it, they're giving Pfizer, as we know, as the booster, which makes perfect sense. And again, all that data supports that notion. Now, there are hard to reach groups and we've heard about hard to reach groups here for vaccination, like uh, migrant workers uh, who are working in farms, picking fruit and so on. And they come from countries and they're consuming their own media online countries where there's a lot of vaccine hesitancy in Eastern Europe, for example, yeah. how to reach those communities. In New Zealand, yeah. now, they have an friend, interesting idea. A friend of mine, Manus Rogue, not to thank him, but he sent me this. I'd missed this report, but Manus sent me this, and it's really interesting. So New Zealand, as you know, we always look at them, don't we, as a, an example. Uh, they've got to 90% of their adult population vaccinated, by the way, very quick in New yep. Zealand. The hard-to-reach groups, they're now homing in on these ones who won't take the vaccine. And it turns out there's a big gang culture in New Zealand. Uh, the Maoris and the Pacific Islanders form gangs 
gangs is cultural and there's a big kinship in them and they're they're not taking the vaccine. Are they criminal gangs? I think some of them are actually. Yeah. Yes, some, that has to be said, some of them are. But um, but the thing is they're in poorer communities and in general poorer communities won't take the vaccine as much as more affluent ones. So what have New Zealand has done, Pat? They've asked the gang leaders to help them. <laughs> and two of the gang leaders, it's a great one, this Harry Tam and Sonny Fatupito have stood up and said, we will now promote the vaccine among gangs. <laughs> now, this sounds unusual, doesn't it? <laughs> and, and they were criticised for this because there is a bit of a criminal side to this, likely. But, but these two gang leaders have gone into their communities. They've helped set up vaccination pop-up centres. They've got themselves vaccinated publicly as an example, you know, and they've travelled all over New Zealand and more and more gang leaders now are getting involved in this vaccination campaign. And, and they asked one of them, uh, Harry, why are you doing it? He said, to help my people. It's as simple as that. The vaccine will protect my people and I'm going to go out now and I'm going to press that they should be vaccinated. And it's something like 80,000 people are in this cohort, which isn't insubstantial. Like in yeah. Ireland, we've still got about 200,000 people. I mean, if you could get another 80,000 vaccinated in New Zealand, that'll help the overall vaccination campaign. Okay, so as long as they're not pushing something else into your arm. <laughs> well, this is the strange thing. Yeah, but it's, it's the authorities, yeah. the health authorities who, who are actually doing the vaccination. Yeah, and they've given grants. I mean, the trouble is, obviously, it's a bit like here in a sense, it's hard to reach certain groups overall. Yeah. And they're, they're reaching these gangs. They're giving them more grants. They're going into the communities more and more. And guess what, Pat? The vaccination rate in these groups have now gone mm. up because these two leaders have stood up to say we want to help our people.